Hey guys, welcome to another Learning with Lumi series. In this episode, I want to do a very in-depth look on the hero Enchantress and look at how two different players are going to be playing the hero. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been requesting things on like how to micro hero specifically, how to hotkey and such. The best advice I could give is actually just go into a single player game and work out your hotkeys. So for example, the hotkeys I generally like to use is you know 4, 5, or 6 on my keyboard and use your control key and then you control 4 to hotkey it. Um, sometimes you want to use your tab key as well. Yes, that's the best advice I could give. Microing something that the more you do it, the the better you get. Uh, figure out your hotkeys in a single player game and even in a public game if you fail migrating Chen or Enchantress that's totally okay because everyone starts somewhere. The more you do it the better you'll get. Uh, and also keep in mind this is a very Enchantress focus. Now I know there's in, there's a lot of comparison between Enchantress and Chen. At the end of the day they are very very different in their way of dominating creeps. Enchantress generally is a little bit better early on when it comes to dominate creeps. And of course your jung your jungling pattern and your ganking pattern should adjust accordingly to that. And as you can see from this enchantry focus, that at, at the end of the video you should know if you're playing Chen, some of these stuff you probably cannot do or do as well with Chen. Alright, with that in mind, let's jump into our first replay. Alright, cool stuff. We're gonna jump into our first replay. This is CLG versus Next KZ of the Premier League, game number three of the best of three series. This series is tied one apiece. As we have the heroes laughing maniacally. Um, the player we're going to be focusing here today is Aki, which I personally believe is one of the most underrated junglers out there. When we think of junglers in the European scene, we think of Puppy, we think of Art Style. I personally feel that Aki is one of the best junglers out there as well. He, he, he works well with his team. I mean, his Enchantress play really compromised with his team quite strongly. And that's a very big point. Like when you play Enchantress and Chen, you're not really just in your jungle doing your own thing. You try to really help out your team as, as much as possible. Let's look at his uh, starting item build. Uh, he has a, well, it's 200. I, I do believe he bought a chicken and then he bought a ring of protection, smoke, uh, salve, and a clarity, okay. Now, so you guys might be wondering, what is the ring protection really for? It's for a ring of Besaida's upgrade, as you might imagine. Um, it's not really used for giving yourself a little bit more mana regeneration, although that is a, a strong benefit. Uh, not really for the plus armor for your creeps anyways, but it's for if you get a successful gank, for example a backstab gank on the top lane, and then you can immediately get to push. Having a plus two armor aura for your entire creep wave is very, very strong and very, very potent for a creep. Um, so you can see that, that the Silver Bear is trying to do a little bit of a pulling going on with this bear. And Enchantress is doing a very good job kind of warding that one away. Alright, so a couple things about Aki's Enchantress play that's really, really impressive is the way that he takes care of his jungle. What I mean by taking care of the jungle is that Enchantress, different from Chen, has the ability to dominate a lot of creeps. Uh, in fact, you can get up to three creeps uh, just from a level 1 in Chen. And that's not something that Chen could do. And by taking care of the jungle means that you don't block your own big camps. Um, for example, the clock is ticking to 54 right now. He's going to back off. He realized that he cannot kill the Furbok in time. And that's going to block the next big creep. Um, as you know, if you dominate the Furbok and you just leave, well, it's going to just leave the smaller Furbok there. And that's not going to do anything for you. The next time you come back to this camp, you're not going to have a big creep. But now he pulled away. It's a wild game creep, which is one of the better pushing creeps. I'll, I'll make a small distinction in terms of which creeps are what you want to do later on. But that's a, a small precursor of what Aki does very, very well. Is making sure that every time he goes to a camp, he, he finds big creeps. And that's a huge part of Enchantress play. For example, for Chen, it's, it's, it's a hero that you could keep your creeps for a long time. As you know, Chen, when you dominate a creep, you dominate a creep forever. Whereas Enchantress, there's a timer on it. So if, if you don't take care of your jungle, as you can see here, he's not taking care of the jungle because he's going off to gank. And the next time you come back to that big camp on the left, yeah, he's, he's just going to find that small, small fur bog, and that's not really what he wants. Uh, so a small micro, I'm going to pause here as he's going for the gank. You notice he micro, he always micros his creep to be in the front and then the enchantress in the background. Now, um, as we could quickly maybe click on this Furbok, yep, it has no mana, so it's going to keep it on the background. No reason to actually send it in a clap, whereas this one does have the mana to do so. So what you want to do is, you want to put the Furbok or, or Centaur or No Creep, whatever you have, to the front. Because generally they need, they are slower, and uh, generally, well, faster in this case, but generally you want them to be in, in there first. You don't want your Enchantress to be in first, and you don't want to be tanking shots as well. 
So a lot of Enchantress players, I always see them just, you just box track and then just right click on the enemy hero. That is not the way to do it. Um, especially with hotkeys, uh, you want to send the creep in first and then the hero in next. And then what comes up after next is somewhat elementary kind of micro. Um, one thing that the player perspective kind of thing that the replays are not showing, which is a little bit annoying, is that you don't see exactly what he's clicking. For example, he's clicking on the fur bog there, a couple of micros, and uh, well, pretty easy first blood. And that's where the Smoke of Deceit came in. And Smoke of Deceit is kind of like a almost a mandatory purchase from the get-go for Enchantress players because it allows you to get your creeps into basically melee range um, with relative ease. Somewhat of an interesting choice, he kind of popped his self and a clarity, um, even though he wasn't really needing either of them. I thought that was a little bit strange, but that's the way he wants. Maybe he doesn't want to get ganked as he's jungling. Maybe he doesn't want to die when he's get doing the ganks. That's fine. So he takes care of a, uh, a wolf creep here. And the second thing that's very, very important to Enchantress play is communication with your teammate. Normally, you cannot make a gank like this. You just can't because you just die. Uh, to the tower shots and whatnot, but you can only make a gank like this for example if the creep wave is very much so push or if the enemy uh, Your teammates are tanking the towers for you and you can see that there's a disruption So those are tanking the towers a little bit. We're gonna see enchant burrow strike and a sun strike look at the communication from CLG um, and CLG of course is playing rather nicely here But the, the what I'm trying to stress is if you're playing enchantress in a public game And if you're trying to do that backstab gank and if your teammates are not aware of it or if your team your creep equilibrium is not available, yeah, it's not gonna work out. So you gotta communicate whether by pinging or typing to your team. So you notice that he's picking up the ring of uh, Besaitis here, even though he had gold for the boot to speed. And this really is, is a sign that Aki, maybe his team wants to do a little bit of push. Uh, as you can see that there comes back to the issue of not taking care of Jungo, and now he basically missed out on a big camp. Again, the difference between Enchantress and Chen is that your, your creeps time out. So now Enchantress, at the very least, have, he's spending about 30 seconds to walk around to find a creep. He found the uh, he found this one, probably not the best creep for a gank. So again, he noticed the clock's around 50, 51 seconds. He's going to do a pull first. Maybe he's going to get a better creep for ganking or pushing. I mean, Wildgen is pretty good, but uh, he, founds, he found the Dark Troll Warlord. That's by far the better ganking creep, and he's going to go right back at it. And you notice there's a centaur in this camp, so we'll, we'll uh, take a look at it as well later on, uh, maybe if we do need a ganking creep. So really at this point, Aki, all he has is a uh, Ring of Basilis. I, I didn't point out earlier, of course, uh, he did upgrade his courier. Again, the important thing to do. Again, subtle micro here is, you know, you just have your enchantress back off a little bit. Wait for the Dark Troll Roller to go in first. You want that thing to be taking the tower shots. You don't want yourself to do so. And keep being somewhat patient, again, the communication in terms of these kind of risky ganking path is that you gotta make sure that your creep wave is gonna be tanking the tower. It looks like it will be tanking the tower, and you see the Syllabar, and that Syllabar is basically dead. There's the Disruption. I mean, even if the Disruption wasn't there, um, you just have so much disable. You have a, an Enchant, you have a uh, Net, and there comes the push. So, again, here's where the Ring of Basilis becomes very, very strong. For example, if you want to play a different kind of Enchantress, you want to gank a little bit more and not pull, uh, push as much, that's fine. You don't need to get a Ring of Basilis. This item build really uh, helps uh, what he wants to do. And this is one like small, subtle play that that makes or breaks a really good or bad Enchantress player. Is you know, It's just micro a small skeleton, draw the next creep wave, the entire creep wave away. To make sure that they don't tank your creeps under their tower, and you're gonna go for tower lasted. Simple play. Now a little bit of a mistake here, I think. I'm not sure if it's a mistake or well, it's easy for me to say it's a mistake because I have the ability to pause and think and slow it down and speed it up. But a very interesting play here for Aki is that he just ran in, turned on the healing attendants. We'll be talking a little bit more about this spell later on. When I think the better skill choice probably was enchant, or maybe should have done both. But he, what, he, what he really ended up doing is pop the healing attendants and not really do too much with it. Uh, um, I think he wanted to heal was heal his teammates, but teammates are uh, a little bit more aggressive. They are going to get a kill thanks to a very good sunstrike. Aki is going to live, uh, but really he's not going to help out Sankey. Sankey eventually will make it out alive, but no big deal. So 1000 go here for Enchantress. Very tempting to get the boots of speed from Sai Shop anyways. And again, trying to take care of his jungle. This is a nice attempt to get off a pull, unfortunately, just by a tiny tinsy bit that the uh, Furbog was in the uh, spawn camp box, so he can't really 
get the successful pull. But with a thousand gold, we're hitting the six minute mark. So Aki knows we got a reward. He got the courier upgrade already. I think. He just bought a Boots of Speed and maybe he could get another Smoke of the Sea to help out with the next gank. But so far, uh, Aki doing what he needs to do. Making sure that the wards are constantly up. And uh, some you might want to actually go for a pair of D ward as well, the Sentry ward. Uh, if you feel the need to, well, D ward the enemy jungle. So finds herself a Centaur, going to mow down the small creep again. Taking care of your jungle, making sure that a new spawn of creeps will always spawn. And what is Enchantress picking up? Okay, wards and just Boots of Speed. And he's going to ward the high ground here, um, which is actually, I'm not sure if it's a big coincidence, but I see a lot of Enchantress and Chen players love to ward this place uh, as a second choice. I mean, it does give you a, a good path and seeing in the, the, mid, the mid lane, but it's really not the biggest deal. Now, pause over here. This position that his creep is in right now, like over here, that is not like, that's not, um, let me... That's not a coincidence. This during nighttime, you barely see just this. So let's quickly go over to, for example, Radiant Vision. All right, I figured out the Vision camera. And as you can see, if you just hang over here, even if there's an enemy hero that chills over here, you're not gonna see into just over here. So this is kind of purposeful uh, placement of yourself to make sure you're as closest to the to gank bath as possible without being seen. Again, she's just one of those very small, subtle plays that dis differentiate, you know, really good players uh, between, you know, really good players or metacore players. So it's going to be trying to set up a gang on the mid lane. It's going to be somewhat difficult, even though it is nighttime, because he doesn't have the Smoke of the Sea. Smoke of the Sea is generally just one of the best ganking items here for uh, Enchantress. A little bit of misclap. No, he doesn't even hit the clap. No, he dominated it with the Enchant. And uh, that was a misgank, because, uh, well, they ganked the Illusion. <laughs> Not a little bit, not not too useful when you're ganking illusions, but that's fine. I mean, so far, if you look at what Enchantress has been doing so far, he's one zero and two. Um, got a chair, one tower push down, got a kill. I think he got a first blood. Um, got two assists for his teammate. Like this is already very very effective Enchantress play. If we just stop the replay right now, you can see. I, in my opinion, Aki is really really effective so far. Hasn't died. Got a lot of ganks. Upgraded couriers. Uh, got the second pair of wards, and uh, you know, jungle. It's level four and a half, pretty decent for a jungler that's been doing, a, you know, ganking pretty much. Um, this is gonna be a little bit of good time to really talk about the different creeps that we do see in the jungle. So, for example, this uh, Satyr creep. The the only benefit of having a Satyr creep, in my opinion, is the fact that you do have a ranged nuke, and you have 600 mana on the Satyr creep. Recently got a buff. And uh, so we, we're going to see a dive towards the bot lane. Yeah, so take creeps is not pretty, it's not really good for anything. It's okay for pushing because you can nuke, but there's only a hundred damage, so it's not too high. Um, it, it's okay for a gang because it is, a again, a nuke, but really it doesn't do too much damage. Team is going to break out here. And this is where it's a, a good time to talk about healing intended. Okay, pause real fast. This is where there's an issue with Aki's play. Aki, I, I talked about earlier how important is it to send in your creep first and not your hero first. Now, obviously, you see your teammates dying across the map. You're not going to just have time to move around your creeps and all that stuff. But if you do send in your hero first, you know, probably not the best move. But here's where Healing Attendant is probably one of the more underrated healing spells. He's tanking Diabolic Eating and Pulse Nova. But he's tanking it like a boss because healing attendant is pretty good. You can see that his care creep is lagging behind and he's going to go down here. But still, Aki, microing like a boss. You can see Shockwave is cast despite that he's dying and he's microing his creep even after dying. This is a big aspect of both Chen and Enchantress play. I mean, for example, in that occasion where you, when you're running away with your hero, just, send, just select your hero and run it home. Really, you're not going to do too much of anything else, aside from casting an enchant or something like that, right? And then micro creeps, whether migrating it to safety or migrating it to do a little bit more damage to help your teammates and whatnot. So, so far, we, what we've seen here from this replay is Aki's importance in terms of taking care of his jungle, making sure that every time he revisit a camp, he will find a big creep. And that's a huge play because, again, you want to spend as little time as possible looking for creeps. And secondly, when you're ganking, you know, making sure that creep equilibrium is in order, making sure that you're communicating well with your teammate, and most importantly, making sure that you're microing properly, which is sending in your creep first. Don't let your don't let your hero take extra tower shots and whatnot. So that's going to conclude Aki's play. The team does eventually end up winning here, and uh, really thanks to Aki's 
good control of the of the gangs uh, and the tower pushing department early on. We're gonna jump into a different replay now. It's gonna feature a woke from CLC, and uh, let's let's see how it woke does. All right, the second replay focus is gonna be featuring how to play or a woke from CLC. Uh, as you might know, Awoke is one of the best support player there is in the Chinese scene. Uh, but a big distinction from the replay that we just saw and the replay that we're about to see is that the European Dota and Southern East Asian Dota is a little bit different, as you might imagine. European Dota is all about early ganks and tower pushes, whereas here is all about positioning. And uh, we're going to see a lot of fighting as well, um, but it's going to be less so in terms of killing and then straight into a push but it's more so about killing and then going back to farming so the big the big distinction will reflect on enchantress's item build and speaking of fighting we can see a little bit of here right now crystal might be in trouble but the fact that you know he's close to his tower should be okay now talking about the enchantress's item build here because there's a little bit more or less emphasis on terms of pushing the ring of basilius is not a commonly item that's you know first spot so instead of ring of protection we see a little bit more regenerative we see a little bit more uh you know GG branches to help you survive a little bit more. I'm gonna have a better focus in terms of hero engagement and also we have a better focus on, in terms of creeping. You do wanna creep a little bit in games like these. And that really, I mean, these two distinction is a, a really good, um, I guess, segue to talk about if, if you wanna apply this to your public games or maybe lower level scrim games, there is gonna be some games where you just don't wanna gank or there's, a, there's gonna be some ganks as we see up. Are we on hero perspective? Let's make sure that we're not on hero's perspective. Let's, let's look a little over here. All right, we're gonna go to Enchantress hero's perspective. Uh, I think Chen stole one creep and then Enchantress stole a back with Enchant. Uh, a little bit of one of those really, really fun engagement things. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that, you know, in your public games or whatever you might be playing Enchantress, there's some times where you just can't gank. There's, for example, you have an anti-mage Omni Knight dual lane or something. You know, not exactly the best gankers in the book is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes you just want to jungle up and uh, you could easily tell when your teammates pick the hero. Uh, what, if they pick some bad gankers, perhaps you don't even get that smoke of the sea early on. Perhaps you just want to get something that helps you jungle a little bit faster and get to your quick level 6s, uh, depending on what you need. Again, we're showing the importance of Enchantress keeping track of his jungle and um, making sure that you, you do find your big camps. Uh, we'll see Awoke because he's constantly worried about his team on the bot lane getting ganked later on, where he's not really doing the best job. Ooh, a little small, small tidbit on the micro. I want to point that one. Aki also did it very well and did not point it out earlier. I need to scroll back just a little bit, just a little bit. Oh man, just a little bit. That was like a minute ago. Okay, but let me go back to my point before I uh, quickly... Yeah, later on the, uh, the replay of Woke is going to really fight with his team. And because of that, he doesn't have time to make sure that each jungle camp is cleared up. And also because of that, he, he's not going to have good, good selection and big creeps. And you can see that really wastes Enchantress a lot of his time. And also making sure that he's, you know, not as effective. So again, huge aspect of Enchantress play is making sure that you're going to find the creeps that you want to find each and every time. Okay, so the small thing that I noticed about his play here, which it's only going to save you like tinsy bit of second, is that as you can see the, the creep is dwindling in terms of HP. What he's about to do is he's going to select a fur bog, micro the fur bog away, and then he's going to have his hero to do the last hit on the, on this, you know, on the, what you call it, on the smaller fur bog. Yep, you see that micro away and then his hero. So he's just saying, what the hell does that do? Like, why is that a big deal? I mean, again, we talked about how you want to keep the furbock in the front, right? You basically save yourself like a second. You save yourself a second. You know, you, you guys know me. I'm big on those, you know, sw tread swapping, saving yourself 10 mana, things like that. Those small plays, the fact that you, you save yourself a second means you're going to be going to the next camp a little bit quicker. You could get off pulls, you get off ganks, whatever that might be. You're saving yourself a little bit more time. And that's from, hey, you know that your Enchantress will be doing the last hit to kill the thing anyways. So might as well micro for a block a little bit back. Small distinction, small place. Not not too big of a, not like a huge things, but small distinctions that, that makes, you know, hey, Awoke is a great micro. Interesting that he's doing a little bit of pull, obviously. Perhaps his team asked him to do that pull because you can see that Creep Equilibrium is a little bit further out. So you want to make sure that, you know, they get the Creep Equilibrium a little bit back. Okay, fair enough. 
Now, an another thing that I uh, have not talked about in the Radiant Jungle, can I actually, yes, we could actually go here. During the daytime, you could actually, if you're playing Chen or Enchantress, you could park it here over here. And then because you're standing over here, you'll just slightly look over into this camp. And then you could dominate a big creep and you could jungle from up here. So for example, sometimes you're going to start out jungling and then you notice, hey, they warded here so I don't have access over here. Instead of running all the way down here and waste, you know, a minute every time, a minute is exaggeration, but a couple of seconds every time, you could just stand over here, jungle this camp, you could shoot downwards, and then you micro the creep you know, to this camp, and then as your hero, loop around. So again, small things that will save you time, but time is of essence in a game like this. So as you see that, we're going to find ourselves another football camp. And here's our Woke really got to worry about his enemy, you know, coming to jungle. Uh, if if you're ever doing a pull, it's very easy for the enemy to kind of walk in the jungle as Dark Ring is doing right now. So what he's sending the Furbok to do is making sure that his Shaker is getting some protected neutral farm. And it looks like Shaker trying to do a little bit more pulling as well. And because of that, he really would not be able to clear out this creep. He does see Chen coming in as well, so he knows the engagement will be happening soon. Chen could make a huge dive into the, uh, into their jungle with the creep. So he does not have time to clear out the creep. And again, small play. He micro the Furbok forwards and micro the Enchantress back. He's going to keep on doing that. Yeah, there you go. Furbok forward, Enchantress back. And he would like to clear up his camp, but because there's so much hero fighting going on, he really cannot do so. Again, a little bit of micro and creep. I hope you guys are not getting a little bit nauseated because this micro is quite quick. And uh, the camera switch quite quick as well. Again, one big thing about Enchantress early play as he eats one nuke, he's going to eat a second nuke as well. Is that healing attendant, if they don't kill you quickly, it is pretty broken. Uh, he's going to be fine now. He's going to survive long enough. He's going to micro his hero go back. And meanwhile, the fur box constantly on him gets a first blood. Nicely done. I like what he does here as well. He's going to steal the creep from the Chen. Meanwhile, his teammate is going to get the kill on the Crystal Maiden. So what we saw there from Awoke is he's using, use, utilizing his hero to the fullest potential. I mean, that was a lot of tanking that he did, but that's what healing attendant is for. If you could tank those burst nukes earlier level, then yeah, no problem there. Of course, you do see Tie Hunter around. Tie Hunter might think he's safe. Look at the mini map. Shaker is gonna be coming around. Gonna immediately sell Tangos and grab not Tango, sell GG Branch and grab the boots of speed. Um, here's here's where generally Enchantress likes to. Enchantress usually like to be in this position and do a backstab gank. But the the idea is the same thing. QQQ is communicating with his teammates. Hey, are you guys gonna dive? Are you guys gonna tank? I'm gonna drop off the Fissure and we could go for a Tie Hunter kill. I'll talk about the speed to speed purchase in just a bit. But if you're in Chantress, if you're in uh, Shaker's position right now, you make those same questions. Hey, are you gonna dive? I'm gonna dive right now, you know? Communication is the key. So a little bit of engagement happening here. You see that both the uh, Enchantress is coming in, the, the stun is coming in, Fissure is gonna be backstabbing. Uh, Merlini, which is a fake tag, is, is dead. There's a stun from it, and it looks like Batrider Firefly is gonna get the kill. We're gonna tank a couple of tower shots, no big deal. Pop off the healing intended, look what he's doing. Moving away the Centaur, don't want the Centaur to take the healing. Small micro and things. It looks like we, we have a little bit of graphical glitches. There's like a whole bunch of pixelated dingers. Anyways, his item uh, purchase is, oh my goodness, clarity getting cancelled, not fun. And uh, yes, uh, his item purchase is a boot speed. Again, we saw the first big item uh, in last game in Aki's plays that he upgraded Ring of Pesades. Again, that reflects a little bit more of what this game is about. Uh, unlike unlike the European games, these games are generally a little bit more about um, hero engagements, about lane controls and whatnot, and not so much about hero uh, about tower pushing. And Boots of Speed is a little bit better for things like you know hero engagement, uh, controlling the creep equilibrium, and things of na that nature. He dominated one of these smaller Satyr creeps as he <laughs> woefully low back to that big camp and realized, hey, I did not clear it out, so I don't have a big creep. And he find he sees Ogre Magis and clear can't clear that one out by herself as well because she has the uh, Satyr creep. Not. I really like the Satyr creep choice. I, I don't think not enough players does it. What that does is it's a fifty, it's it's a hundred mana mana burn. It only costs a Satyr fifty mana, but he has four hundred mana, I believe. He has a lot of mana to start with. Crystal Maiden is dead, by the way. Small play I wanted to point out here is that a lot of players, when they see Crystal Maiden right there, and be like, okay, let's just throw off our enchant and get a kill there. Enchant's only a sixty-five mana cost, so it's not a biggest, you know, it's not a biggest investment, even if you throw out. But again, good control on the mana management. If you know that you don't need to cast an extra spell to get the kill, since Fissure had a good stun and there's Napalm on the air already. 
well, then you know what? Don't cast a spell. And he do he doesn't do it. A lot of players would just cast a spell and waste the mana. You could actually maybe save your enchant for the Tide Hunter, but Tide Hunter, one big slippery fish is going to run out. Again, he's going to use this to tear back and keep mana burning. I mean, just small play, making sure that, <laughs> hey, that's lane control right there, burning uh, all the mana. And now we're going to go back to the camp and uh, enchant again. Woefully sees the fact that he cannot grab a big creep, and this this is where this is where not having a, a proper jungle control is detrimental to Enchanter's play. Right now, six minutes in, wards are down. It is nightfall. This is a very good time to find a centaur, smoke up, and go for a gank. But guess what? You can't find a centaur because because there's no centaur in the jungle. Uh, now this is not to fall awoke's you know mistakes or anything like that because he's fighting a lot. So whatever small chance that you could get to clear out your jungle, just try to, to utilize that time. Again, time is of essence. That's why I make such a big deal about one second shading off one second off your play, because it's big. Because it's nighttime now, he can't even do that high ground to low ground jungle that I pointed out on the left, on the big left camp uh, over here, if you can see my cursor on the minimap. So he's basically checking for the runes. He has to walk all the way to the high level camp onto the left side. And you can see he basically wasted one minute to one and a half minute really doing nothing off that one camp that he did not clear earlier. This is a huge part of Enchantress play. Not the best creep that he's finding. Oh, he's gonna be jungling for a little bit. And again, that gives me a little bit of time to talk about what, what creep are good for. Of course, if you want early game, I think their best creep early on you wanna ever find is a Furbok. Because not only does it gank well, it also pushes very decently. Clap does a lot of damage to creeps. Centaur, it's okay. It does increase your creeps' attack speed. Or is it movement speed? Increase one of them. Um, but aside from Stomp, he doesn't actually do too much. Uh, the second best creep you want to find is this Dark Troll Warlord. Because it has a ranged net. The only creep that has a ranged stun. And also he summons Skeleton, which is like so, so good for pushing. So I, I do believe that the... And of course, uh, the net is also good against certain heroes with blink spells, such as Queen of Pain and Anti Mage, because you can't blink when you're netted. A little bit of misplay over here, in my opinion, because again, you want to send your enchantress backward and have the creeps look going a little bit forward. But this is perhaps similar to Aki's previous Miss Micro, quote unquote Miss Micro, is because hey, there's a big team fight breaking out. You don't have time to organize your army going around. So, but he's gonna come around. Can he get off the enchant? He he does have the mod do so. Can, not popping off the enchant just yet. There's gonna be a net on Merlini, and he's kind of in a little bit of trouble. No mana, but the gift vision comes around. By the way, Crystal or QQQ one uh, three five seven is playing like balls. Shockwave micro. There you go. Still haven't used this enchant yet. Gonna get a kill on Crystal Maiden and save the enchant for the Tie Hunter, I presume. No enchant. Okay, just want to save mana, I suppose. And here's where you could transition into a push, but instead gonna upgrade into Arcane Boots. Again, a focus in terms of um, making sure you get item progressions and, and farm. We're seeing a level of five and a half, eight minutes in, not too bad. You could perhaps use the healing intended, make sure that his HP is high enough, but could it be a net, no? Okay. All right, let's go back to our creep uh, talk topic. Um, the Ogre Magi is not too bad. It's actually a decent creep to get during the mid game. Frost Armor is pretty, it's no joke. Like, I mean, one of, Lich's most underrated spell, in my opinion, is Frost Armor. Uh, if you grab it during mid game, that's very good. Really, on not the best creep you want to get. Frost Armor is okay for pushing, but really, that's not the best pushing creep either. Satir is only really good if you grab a lot of them. Satir, one of the benefit of having a Satir is it has 600 mana, so you could Shockwave in theory six times. Um, but it, it's one of the, it's the only thing that has a range component. I mean, range nuke, if you will. Satir, you're not really too happy about finding that kind of creep. Uh oh, we're gonna heal ourselves. Healing tendon, by the way. It's pretty much OP. We're gonna enchant and get a kill? Enchant? No? Uh, no enchant, but he's gonna get the kill regardless. Because he has arcane boots and crystal maiden doesn't. And, ooh, nice. Oh, micro coming here from Enchantress using centaur to body block, and we're still microing. You saw what he was doing? He was orb walking with Impetus, also doing centaur body block. That's. That's when you kind of just sit here and be like, that's amazing. That's pretty amazing. I'm going to just pause and just... Alright, no, I'm just... <laughs> it's pretty amazing, but we don't need to pause for that. But Anyways, that's that's where, the, where you want to go to in terms of how, how well you want to micro. He's going to dominate this creep as well, because that creep wanted to destroy that illusion rune instead. I'm going to have a die 
bottling that up because he enchanted. Okay, what we saw there from Awoke is where you want to take your micro game to. Where you could do body block with one hero, micro your own hero. I mean, that's, that's some OP stuff. So, and again, that comes in from years of practice, months of practice. It, you know, just start trying. Start trying if you want to get there. Um, and I think that's going to conclude uh, pretty much what we've seen here. The last, that, that strong micro play is really all, all that we have. I'm going to end this learning with Lumi to talk about some of the enchantress creeps. But before that, let's talk about some of the important stuff that we saw in this game. Because there's a lot of focus in terms of jungling and you know fighting and whatnot, you saw that Awoke, during the middle of his jungling, he wasted at least, I don't know, a minute or so doing nothing. Simply because his camp got blocked. One camp got blocked. And, and that's... That's where we have the issue here, and it looks like we have engagement. He's gonna go down here. Did not have the mana to drop Impetuses, and uh, that's why he died. So that one play where he did not, was they not able to uh, get creep from that camp? Well, he he wasted a minute or so. Um, and that's pretty the, the, the big thing I want to show from this replay, how important it is to keep your jungle clear. Uh, we saw very good ganking from Shaker. And also we saw how good uh, Awoke here understood in terms of what healing attendant does for you. It heals a crap ton. It heals a crap ton. And because he understands that, he could tank those early damage nuke and trade hit. Because, I mean, a Tide Hunter and a Crystal Maiden versus a single Enchantress, you, you say, yeah, you know, the Tide Hunter, Hunter and the Crystal Maiden will win, but Enchantress tanked a good barrage of those spells, was able to do a lot of damage in return, got first blood. I like the fact that he's dominating over Chen creeps uh, in those engagements as well. So overall, this is a, a very good replay to kind of admire in terms of microlink and uh, knock him on the, again, the lack of jungle. But again, we saw a little bit, you know, Tinsy micro play where you pull away the fur bog as the Enchantress is doing the last hit to save yourself a couple seconds. Those are important points. All right, so those are the two replay. I'm going to just use uh, the remaining little bit of time to talk about the creeps that you might want to be dominating a little bit on early on for gang slash pushes. Again, for ganking, it's going to be for the fur bog, for the Dark Troll Warlord, for the Centaur. Some of the best ganker there is. For a um, for pushing, Dark Troll Warlord, fur bog, sometimes Harpy Storm, but that's really pushing it. Sometimes the Big Satyr. That's pushing as well. Wowgen, by the way, is really, really good for pushing. Not only does the tornado um, do damage and slow the enemy, you can actually just put that tornado right next to the enemy hero, have it follow the enemy hero, and the enemy hero is simply just going to keep running away. And then, basically, there's no enemy defending the tower, and you can easily push that. Wowgen is also very good because it gives your creeps plus two, or was it plus three? I think it's plus three armor for the entire creep wave, which is like a free Ring of Basilius. And yes, it does stack with the Ring of Basilius. So if you have a Ring of Basilius and then the Wowgen creep, your entire creep wave is getting plus five armor. Pretty big stuff. So that's one of the best pushing creep there is. And, uh, you know, you might be thinking, well, what if I don't find any of them? What if I only find, like, a freaking wolf or a you know, whatever else. That, that shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen. Again, if you're keeping good track of your jungle creeps, making sure the big camps are always available, then you're cool. Like, you, you should at, at the very least find a good creep. Unless, like, the gods of Dota, like Ice Frog, is just not liking you. So, hopefully, this enchantress in depth analysis in terms of keeping track of your jungle, how to micro, how to communicate with your teammate has been helpful. Give me some feedback in terms of if this was helpful, if there's some aspect that you'd like me to discuss a little bit further in detail, things of that nature. Yep, hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. And that's it from me. This is Luminous signing off. GG, guys.